Today we had a strong earthquake swarm. Strong magnitude 5.6 earthquake hits the west coast. Oregon and California affected. This is the area of the Ring of Fire and the Cascadia subduction zone. That's to give a major earthquake. We've had an earthquake swarm off west coast, which is as we can see on the Ring of Fire. We know that Hawaii has been erupting since May 3rd, and it has daily earthquakes, the big ones, with the collapse explosion of the Halema'umau crater. But today we've had a series of earthquakes on the west coast, which is right on the Cascadia subduction zone. As we can see here, Northern California and Oregon. This is where these earthquakes have struck. Locked part of the interface between North America and subduction plates, the fault that breaks in great earthquakes, great earthquakes. The Cascadia subduction zone off the coast of North America spans from Northern California to southern British Columbia of Canada. The subduction zone can produce earthquakes as large as magnitude 9 or course and corresponding tsunamis. Okay, this is British Columbia, Vancouver, British Columbia of Canada, all the way Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. And this is where we had the earthquakes today. We start with 2 35 in the afternoon at 4.3 and then we go to the big one of 5.6 about 10 minutes later at 2.44 and uh, Hawaii of course had the big collapse explosion at 5.3 magnitude then we go again to Northern California that's about three hours later after the 4.3 the initial 4.3 off coast of Northern California and of course we have the Mexico earthquakes and then again we have the Northern California 4.2 two hours after that so that's five hours at four hours after the initial uh, 4.3 the 5.6 10 minutes later 3 hours later and then 5 hours later 4.2 and these are just the earthquakes above magnitude 2.2 there you have it this is a, an explanation by Professor Michio Kaku concerning the San Andreas area which is of course south of the Cascadia subduction Professor Michio Kaku cosmologist physicist believes that this area is locked and loaded for a major earthquake. Let's listen to what he explains. The danger zone of... Uh, I, tell you, I grew up in Cal high school and junior high. We've been hearing about an earthquake coming in California for years. What makes this different? Well, before it was all hocus pocus and black magic predicting earthquakes. And I was born in California, 10 miles from the San Andreas Fault, living under the shadow of the big one. Now we can quantify this. And we now know that the San Andreas Fault is locked, loaded, and ready to rumble. We now realize that the people of Los Angeles are living. Okay, San Andreas, of course, uh, okay, is, is south, but we're talking about the Ring of Fire and. Uh, uh, these things are, of course, right next to each other. Let's go. Living on borrowed time. We now know that by digging into the soil, we can go down 1,200 years into the past, looking at soil laid down hundreds of years ago, and we find 10 major earthquakes in the last 1,000 years. The difference in time is roughly 100 years on average. The last big one was 160 years ago. So according to one calculation, we're 60 years overdue for another big one. It's not just the earthquakes we have to worry about, it's also the nuclear power plants in the area. Besides the fact that the earthquake is destructive on its own, let's go back to what happened in Japan in 2011.
what nuclear power plants are in the area there of the Cascadia subduction zone? Well, we have this, the Trojan nuclear power plant in Oregon. And we have this thing here. Let's see. Northwest United States in Rania, Oregon. It's the only commercial nuclear power plant to be built there. There was opposition to this plant from the design stage. From the beginning, before it was even built. The three main opposition groups of the Trojan Decommissioning Alliance, four laws, four laws on the board and mother peace, but let's go and see. This was uh, built, constructed in 1975. 1975. It was supposed to expire at 2011. It's still working. The opposition includes violent, nonviolent protests organized by Trojan Decommission Alliance, as we can see. It's still working. Okay? Seven years later. The Trojan steam generators designed to last the life of the plant, but it was only four years before cracking of the steam tubes were observed. And this is, of course, before any earthquakes occurred. Demolition of the cooling tower. Okay. Um, this is what we have to be weary of. What happens when we have a major earthquake and uh, we have power plants on that area? We have another one south of that in Southern California, but that's again on the ring of fire. God forbid if that area that Professor Michio Kaku states is locked and loaded starts giving large earthquakes. So we'll keep updates on this because obviously it's just woken up. I'll leave links below for you for this.